go with me in your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 7. It says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. Isn't that beautiful? Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. I want to read to you from the Amplified Bible. It says, Most blessed is the man who believes in, trusts in, and relies on the Lord, and whose hope and confidence the Lord is. So when we learn to lean on, believe in, trust in, rely on, depend on Him, on every area of our lives, that is trust. That is when you enter into trust. We look to God as our source. We look to God as our priority. We seek Him first above anything else and everyone else. Because just like what Dr. Paul Kim said earlier today, in life it's very easy to rely on many other things except God. It's easy to lean on our knowledge, our education. Easy to lean on our riches, the money that we have, our own accomplishments, the people that we know, our family connections. Easy for us to lean on our own experiences. Well, in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, there was a king by the name of Asa. Everybody say Asa. Now, he was the third king of Judah, and the first two kings were really wicked kings. So he was the first one in Judah that the Bible characterizes as a godly king, a king who was spiritual. He reigned for 41 years, actually one more year more than King David. And the people had great spiritual revival. He led them back to the worship of God in the house of the Lord. So here was a very spiritual man, a man of faith, a man of belief. But yet, he struggled with his trust in God. You see, 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 12, it says, And in the 39th year of his reign, Asa, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his malady was severe. Yet in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. He did not seek God when he was sick, when he had a disease. Instead, he put his faith and relied and leaned on and depended on the doctors. You see, sometimes we can be like Asa, very spiritual, love to worship, maybe a revivalist ourselves. But yet, when we are faced with personal challenges and struggles, well, we find it very difficult to trust in God. Now, in fact, his name, there's a paradox here, there's, there's an irony here. His name, Asa, actually means doctor. So here was this guy, his name means doctor, and when he had a personal sickness, well, he trusted in the human doctors. Now, I thank God for all the doctors in our church. I have the highest respect for doctors in our midst, and, and we praise God for every one of you. But how many of you know this? No matter how skillful a doctor may be, he is still a human. Well, she is still a human. And they are capable of giving the wrong diagnosis. They are capable of prescribing wrong medication. That is why sometimes we go for a second opinion. We go for a third opinion. Because they could be wrong. You see, we have seen this even among many members in our church where they were given wrong diagnosis. So yes, God uses doctors to help us when we are sick. But when we go to the clinic, to the medical center, to the hospital, to see a physician, well, our trust should be in the Lord. We should be praying, God, you are the source of my healing. Move in the thoughts of my doctor. Move in the hands of my doctor. Use my doctor to heal me because ultimately, you're the one who is in charge. You're the one who is in control. You see, Asa believed God, but he couldn't trust him. Go with me to Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3. And here we have the story of King Nebuchadnezzar. He set up an image and demanded that everybody bow down to this image. Right? In fact, 
Bible eschatologists, people that study end times, say the building, I mean, the, the image is 666, 60 cubits, 6 cubits, 600 cubits, it's 666. So they say it's like a picture of the Antichrist. Now, he set up an image. At the sound of the music, all must bow, all must worship. If not, you'll be cast into the fiery furnace and you will die. So either you bow or you burn, right? A simple proposition. You bow or you burn. Three Hebrew young people, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, three young men, they refuse to bow. They say, no matter what, we rather burn than bow. So now the king was furious, gave them a second chance. They refused to yield. So look at Daniel 3 and verse 17. If that is the case, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego said, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Now what is that? That's faith. He will deliver us from your hand, O king. So faith says, I know God can do it. God is able. God will do it. God wants to do it. Faith has confidence. They are outspoken. But what made them powerful was not their faith. It was their trust. It was their commitment. Because the next verse says, or oh, let's look at verse 17 again. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, you see that? But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. So trust says, even if God doesn't deliver me, even if God does not heal me, even if God does not provide for me or give me the promotion I'm believing for, I am still not going to bow. You see, our position is clear. King Nebuchadnezzar, we will not be moved in our commitment to God. We will still lean on Him, rely on Him, trust in Him, put our hope and confidence in Him. We will trust in the Lord. Now, look what happened next, verse 19. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changed towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Hey, where's the miracle, huh? Right? I, I, I thought we pray things will get better. It's getting worse. Now, it's seven times hotter. Where's the deliverance? Look at verse 20. And he commanded certain mighty men of valor who were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Hey, they really went in. <laughs> they really went in. <laughs> right? Look at verse 22. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Hey, this is very serious. We're not playing games here. Even the soldiers that dragged them to the furnace, the flame engulfed them and killed them. Very serious. This is not just playing around. Still, there was no breakthrough. Uh, at about this time, most people will lose their confidence. At about this time, they will have stopped confessing the word. At about this time, they will give up. But look what happened here, verse 23. These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fiery furnace. They were so committed. They would not waver in the promises of God because they trusted in the Lord. God is the one they lean on. God is the one they depend on, not the guarantees of King Nebuchadnezzar, not the advice of other people, but it is the Lord. And then what happens in verse 25? Look, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. 
and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. You know what? Jesus didn't come until many years, hundreds of years later. But Jesus, the Son of God, He was there as the Son of God. He was so excited. When we are willing to put our trust in the Lord, the Lord Himself will come into the fire to walk there together with us. Come on, let's give God a big hand. Hallelujah. You see, it says, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So you got to hold that peace. Don't speak negative. Don't curse yourself. Don't change your confession of the promises of God. You hold your peace. That means you maintain your composure. You maintain your coolness. You maintain your calm in the midst of raging storms. You go into the Word. You build up your confidence by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word. You read the Word again. You study the Word. You meditate on the Word. You memorize the Word. Say, God, I'm going to rest in You. I will not be anxious. I will not worry. I trust You, Lord. I trust You. When that happens, you enter into rest. One last verse and we are done. Mark 4, 4 verse 26. The words of Jesus Christ, right? Mark 4, 26. And Jesus said, He said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground, should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. The kingdom of God is like this, Jesus says. It's like this. God wants our life to grow. He wants us to be successful. He wants you to have uh, a life of purpose. And daytime, you should work. Daytime, you try your best. But God gives His beloved sleep. It is when you go to sleep, God begins to work. And let me tell you this. You know, the darker the night, the deeper should be your sleep. Because how many of you know, the more you sleep, the shorter is the night. Sometimes when you cannot sleep, the night is so long. What time is it? Three o'clock. What time is it? 3.30. <laughs> the night is so long. The darkness is so long. But when you sleep, that's the time God works best. God works best when we rest in Him, when we trust in Him. One night recently, I couldn't sleep. My mind was racing, racing, thinking about my problems, my future, thinking about the church, thinking about family, thinking about this, that. My mind was, I just couldn't sleep. I said, oh God, I need to sleep, I need to sleep. But my mind couldn't sleep. My body's tired, but my mind is awake. Ding, ding, ding. Suddenly I heard my wife's son singing to Dayan because Dayan was also struggling to sleep. Son was singing, Dayan, sleep. Jesus loves me. This I know. I'm not a singer. Sing with me. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Sing ten times louder. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. I was listening to this. Boom. <laughs> Slept. Went to deep sleep. Because the moment you invite Jesus to come in, you can enter into rest. Let Jesus come into your life. Let Him come into your situation. Come on, let's give God a big hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Entering into rest is not easy. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4 says, it's an oxymoron, it's an oxymoron. All right, I'm not going to ask you to turn to any more scripture, but Hebrews 4 says, let us labor into rest. Oxymoron, right? <laughs> You got to rest and lay because it's not easy to rely on God. It's not easy to lean on Him, depend on Him, 
Put your trust in Him. Make Him your hope and your confidence. But when we can break through into that rest, we can break through into that. That's the time God began to act on our behalf. That's the time God began to fight for us. When we stop fighting for ourselves, God began to fight for us. And everybody say, Amen. Come on, let's give God a big hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise.